This is Rich Volts, ISA Associate Director, and this podcast will be an explanation of the new iPad teacher evaluation app that ISA has developed along with Hal Schrotz, who has who is a programmer with the CRT uh, company. This iPad application app has been programmed and developed by Hale with input from me using the methodology that I'm using to teach school administrators in Illinois on how to record evidence in this new Illinois teacher evaluation system. And I have also demoed this system with various administrators uh, across the state of Illinois, and I'd like to say thanks to all the administrators who helped me as we develop this application. Now, the technical requirements for using this particular app is you need a FileMaker server, which has an approximate cost of $530. You need the iPad teacher observation tool. This is really the program. And this costs $350 per school, no matter the number of administrators or teachers that you would have in that school. You need FileMaker Pro software, and you would need one version of that for every administrator that you had who was using the observation tool. So there, for example, if you have between 5 and 24, the cost is $171. And you need the FileMaker Go app, which is a free app that you would get at the App Store. Now, this particular observational tool only runs on the iPad. So here is a, an example of a proposal by CRT that describes the cost for this app. And if you are wanting to purchase the app, you would directly go to CRT uh, and Hal Schrotz to buy the app. However, IASA will be doing a number of uh, workshops and academies this year, and we will be demoing and teaching how to use this application at our academies. These academies will start approximately the 1st of July and will run through the entire 2012-2013 school year. So the CRT homepage is um, which you can find by going to crt-iep.com. Again, that's crt-iep.com. You will come to the home page for the CRT company. You can either click on this hyperlink where it says new product or go up here to products and click on this down box. And when you, if you went to products and clicked, clicked on the down box, you would see that there is a tab that says observation tool. You'd click on that tab and you'd come to another page. And down near the bottom of this page, you would see that there is an iPad demo link. This would be one way for you to demo this application um, before you would use it. But again, prior to doing that, you first would have to at least have this FileMaker Go app uh, downloaded to your iPad. Then you would go to the CRT homepage and then click on this iPad demo link and you would be able to demo this work. Now the, the page will look something like this particular page that you're seeing on your screen right now. And the two particular tabs that we're going to be working with today are this formal observation tab and this walkthrough tab. So if you clicked on the formal observation tab, um, a, a page that will come up that will look like this. That, and this is just a, a key or a help page for you to work through. There's a teacher button that will return you to the teacher page. There is a evidence box here where you would type in evidence and the program automatically dates and time stamps it. You could go to the four domains within the Danielson system to, to uh, 
obtain additional information on any of the domains. You can delete the record, you can quit the program, you can go to previous record. record. Later on we're going to show you how you work this. Uh, this is really the magic to this program, how when you're recording this evidence over time, you'll be able to get all this evidence back to you in a database. You're able to categorize the evidence by domain and component. And then if you click on this particular box after you've categorized it, up will pop the various indicators and attributes for the uh, component that you've clicked on, and you're able to paste, if you want, the actual Danielson wording into the evidence box. And again, I'm going to be showing you this as we go. In addition, you'll see that you're able to, if you would want to, rate each evidence that you collect from the teacher. You can rate it as excellent, proficient, needs improvement, or unsatisfactory. The program will automatically import your teachers into the app, and how, they, how it does this is via a comma delimited file, and uh, Hale takes care of this when you purchase the program through him. So this is just a, an example of a dummied up list of teachers that would be into your, go into your uh, iPad app. And again, it's going to keep track how many formal observations and walkthroughs and summative ratings you've done. And the, each administrator would have this for all the teachers in their building. You also could add staff, for example, at a point in time if if you're adding staff after the school year started, there's a place where you can create a new record and add new staff. So we're, now we're going to talk about how you actually work with this formal observation form itself. And here is a picture of a principal that I'm working with in a um, elementary classroom. And you can see she has an iPad and this particular district bought a cover for the iPads that has a keypad on it or keyboard on it. And that's been real instrumental for these administrators feeling like they can type on the key uh, board rather than typing on the screen itself. And you can see she's positioned herself in the room where she can see what the children are doing and she's typing the evidence. So typing the evidence is, is a huge part of the training that I do with school administrators in Illinois. So the idea that you would position yourself in a room, and in this particular case, this administrator, because the only area we, we had uh, at this particular time we were in the classroom was kind of off to the side. Normally we would want to have the administrator be at a point somewhere in the front of the room where they could see the administrator's eyes. But this particular classroom, the teacher was doing some uh, group work with the students, so the teacher was going around the room, so the teacher kind of, this principal just uh, positioned her desk so she could see what was happening in the room, as well as she was walking around the room to actually observe and, and record what was happening when the teacher was working with the students. So again, this is what our formal observation would look like. You'd have who your teacher was. And as you can see here, these uh, evidence statements kind of get pushed down. You can see 313, 314, 315, 317. So as you enter a new entry here, it pushes down the previous evidence. So for example, in this particular evidence statement, it says that the teacher rotates from group to group offering suggestions and clarifications where needed. Okay, once you start to understand what Danielson is, you'd realize that this falls within the domain component of 2C. And so the, this particular point, the administrator has said 2C. In this instance, the administrator is even rating uh, how good that particular um, evidence was. Uh, the, what the administrator could also do, as you can see in this time, where she, again, this is another one, students are grouped into five small groups of four students each. Students start working on the bell activity and it's clear that students have assigned roles in the collaborative project. One student takes attendance and puts the attendance slip on the hook at the door. So this is 2C, which is student, tra student discipline, student transitions. And in this particular case, she clicked on this 2C, which popped up a box that included the critical statements from the Danielson system. And she was able to paste, paste this in there under 2C, one distinguished. The small group work is well organized and students are productively 
engaged at all times with students assuming responsibility for productivity. So she went ahead and pasted that in. You can see she's done that in this spot and this spot as well. So this is how this works. And you can see we have a score that's a running score that's occurring when we're doing this observation. So she, you, she categorized the evidence, as I previously ex explained, by domain and component. And um, in real life, what you're probably doing, you're so busy just, just recording the evidence, later on you come back in here and would categorize this by domain and component. But it's going to be very important that you do categorize the evidence because later what we can do, let's say you've been to into a 10-year teacher's classroom 10 times over a two-year period, you could say, you know, I want to see everything that was 2C on this particular teacher. So in this find rubric, we, we would pick 2C in this particular box and we'd find it and it would give us all the evidence statements we've done over the, the previous 10 observations on this particular teacher. As I also talked earlier, you can rate each descriptor if you want. Now, this is something you may or may not want to do, and again, it'd be up to the administrator, but you could rate this evidence as you are doing it, or when you go here to sort it, you can rate it at that point. But you can do whatever you want from a rating perspective uh, for the various e uh, evidence statements. And as I've also explained, you can choose to view or paste the Daniel descriptors in the evidence box, and you could pick the evidence via one of these domains, or you could, as I said earlier, you could press on this gray 2C, and it would just give you the evidence from just 2C. So if I, when I was going to click what domain it is, it, it pops up a box, and uh, you just would use your roller, and you could roll between these um, various components and choose which one you want and automatically would enter it here. So it enters it automatically in the box. Okay, it keeps a running average when you rate it. If you want to rate it, and again, that would be up to the evaluator to decide to do this. Now, the most important part of this is that all of this comes back to the administrator in a database for the administrator to get the teacher data by domain and component. So when it came back at you, so in this particular case, I've asked, I've asked for it to bring back all the evidence. So you're going to see evidence 2A, 2B, 2C, etc. And you'd also be able to see whether in this particular case um, you've left any of the evidence out. So then you'd go back and maybe do some, some uh, informal observations or walkthroughs to get some more evidence for that teacher. In addition, this system allows the school district, now you wouldn't do this by school, but it allows the school district to set up your own relative importance for each component. So here's an example of how you would do that. Again, this would be done um, in discussions with your teachers, but the relative importance. And once you get to know Danielson, you'll know that, for example, she says that engaged learning is the most important. So this particular district said that that's 15%. Daniel sends the next said the next most important is 3B using question and discussion techniques. So they put that at 10%. And then Danielson talks about the rest of three. So they put six at 3A, six at 3D, and two at 3E. And then Danielson says the next important component would be 2A, creating an environment of respect. They've done 5% for that, 3% for all the others in 2. And then if you go to 1, they did 5% for demonstrate knowledges of content uh, and pedagogy, 5 also for demonstrating knowledge of students, 3 for all the other ones. And then if you go to 4, um, Danielson's also very strong that the teacher would participate in a professional community and share with others the good things they're doing. So this particular district gave that a seven. And then you can see they gave four for 4A, reflecting on teaching, two for maintaining accurate records, four for communicating with families, four for growing and developing responsibility professionally, and two for showing professionalism. So that equals 100. Again, you would do this individually for your school district. But the important point here is, Let's say earlier we were talking about this 2C manages classroom procedures. So on a four-point system, let's say you figured out out of all the evidence you have for the teacher that this teacher is a four, uh, which would be excellent for managing classroom procedures. So this becomes a four times three percent. 
uh, as each as you will be rating each one of these, which will come up and and give you your 100% overall or become a, a mathematical formula or algorithm for determining where the teacher is rated. Now, you can do this mathematically or you could just say that the administrator says, you know, uh, uh, domain one is proficient, domain two is proficient, domain three is excellent, etc. You could you could do it that way. In addition, we have a walkthrough form, and that's this particular tab on our list. And if you, what's nifty about the walkthrough for, form is you, <clears throat> up would pop this after you've entered the teacher name or selected the teacher in in walkthrough speak. So in in the observations you'd be using for walkthroughs, you're, you're really talking about domains two and three, which is classroom environment and instruction, and you can pick whatever you want. So in this particular case, we picked 3A, communicating with students, and then you would you get to choose whether this is excellent, proficient, needs improvement, or unsatisfactory. And what we've done with this particular, so let's say I chose excellent here, then you you in this particular box, you would type in the evidence that you had that would tell the teacher why you chose excellent uh, in this particular case of communicating with students. Now you can print these uh, all these forms uh, by there's a print function that comes out of the PDF uh, setup. You can email the form to the uh, teacher. Uh, after you, maybe you'd go back to your office and in the case I was showing you earlier, you'd make sure you have categorized all the domains and components and then you would email it. Maybe you also wanted to rate out of the evidences. So you do that first before you email it. So you can save it as a PDF, you can email it, or you can view it as a PDF. Now this is one of the enhancements we did to the system when when I was actually following administrators who were doing this work, this one particular principal had a piece of paper and was um, counting a variety of things that the teacher was doing. So I want to show you what we've done so you don't have to do this on a piece of paper. This particular uh, principal was counting the number of times the teacher was saying shh. So you, this just becomes a counter. You define what you're counting, and as you press on this button here, it just starts counting up. Another thing that the uh, administrator started counting was the positive response opportunities that the teacher was doing, and again, it's a counter. And this is another counter that the administrator was doing where the number of redirections the administrator saw that the teacher was doing for certain st students. And then, by the way, the administrator after they were in this particular case after they were counting the redirections she had two students in particular who were getting the uh, the variety of the redirections matter of fact all but one so, so then she put in the two students names in these particular boxes and then started counting the number of redirections that those particular two students were receiving and again this is good data uh, that you evidence that you can bring back to the teacher when you're later on reflecting with the teacher so you can add these counter boxes to count what you're doing as well. So that's that's an example of an enhancement we've done for the system uh, here for this um, system that we have for your formal observations and walkthroughs. Again, um, IASA, uh, we're not marketing this particular application. We will be doing the, the training, and the training will be a one-day uh, administrative Academy training where we'll be going over the highlights of what administrators should know and be able to do with the Danielson system. And then we'll actually be viewing videos of teachers teaching and then the administrators will use uh, demo copies of this software um, to learn how to operate this the software and see if they'd want to purchase this software. And then if the district or school is interested in purchasing the software, they would go directly to CRT and Hal Schrotz to purchase the software. I hope you have found this uh, podcast helpful, and if you're interested in hosting or in attending an academy or workshop on this particular content, uh, topic, please contact me, rvolts, at iasaedu.org, r-v-o-l-t-z, at iasaedu.org.